Hello everyone, welcome to the online tutorial. I am Anjali Verma, Assistant Professor, School of Mass Communication and Media Technology. The topic that we will discuss today is communication theories. But before discussing the communication theories, let me brief you what communication basically is. Well, the imparting or exchanging of information by speaking, writing or using some other medium. It is when we exchange our ideas, thoughts, experiences, likes, dislikes with others. When we talk about the types of communication, first is the verbal communication. It is when we engage in speaking with others. Heading to the non-verbal communication, what we do while we speak. Often says more than the actual words. Very rightly said, it is what we actually do matters the most. That includes your gestures also and your postures. Then is written communication, the sending of messages, orders or instructions in writing through letters, circulars, manuals, reports, telegrams, office memos, bulletin, etc. Now starting with the bullet theory of communication. The bullet theory of communication, as the name implies, bullet theory suggests the messages were thought to be like magic bullets that were shot directly into the receivers. It assumes that receivers are passive and defenseless in nature and take whatever is shot at them. Basically, it is said that the audiences in this particular theory are considered to be passive in nature. Like whatever is shot at them by the media, they just tend to, you know, grasp them. The magic bullet theory also portrays that the media have direct, immediate and powerful effects on those who pay attention to their content. The theory assumed that they reach every eye and ear in the same way and brought about the same changes of thought and behavior in the entire audience. If one believes in the bullet theory, one has to maintain that each member that each number of audience would react identically to the mass mediated message. But this is incorrect as everyone has different educational background, opinion and perception. Heading towards individual difference theory, this theory of mass communication proposes that individuals respond differently to the mass media according to their psychological needs and that individuals consume the mass media to satisfy those needs. Since there are individual differences in the personality characteristics among such members, it is natural that there will be variance in effects. Variables in these differing effects are partially caused by the audience's selective exposure, selective perception and selective retention of media content. Now let us first talk about selective exposure. Selective exposure is a theory that refers to individuals tendency to favor information which reinforces their pre-existing views while avoiding contradictory information. We will select those media which support our beliefs and have information appealing to our interest. Very rightly said it actually happens that we tend to feel interested or we listen or we see a particular content that we are interested in and we altogether reject the content that is not of our interest. Then is selective perception. Selective perception is the process by which individuals perceive what they want to hear in a message while ignoring opposing viewpoints. Using selective perception, people tend to overlook or forget information that contradicts their beliefs or expectations. People will read those messages that are in accordance with their existing attitudes and will ignore the ones that are dissimilar to their held attitudes. For instance, if a person is extremely loyal to a politician, he might agree with everything that a politician says regardless of what he says. So much so that even if his opponent says the same thing, he might completely disagree with him. This happens in our day-to-day -day life as well. What happens is we really feel very happy to listen to a particular person that we are interested in or who we idolize rather than listening to a person whose opinion don't match with us. Selective retention is the process whereby people more accurately remember messages that are closer to their interests, values and beliefs than those that are in contrast with their values, beliefs, 
selecting what to keep in the memory, narrowing the information flow. Now we will talk about the selective retention theory. Selective retention is the process whereby people more accurately remember messages that are closer to their interests, values and beliefs than those that are in contrast with their values and beliefs. Selecting what to keep in the memory, narrowing the information flow. We remember things that are familiar to us. Example, if a politician is making a speech we might retain only those portions of the speech with which we agree. If we perceive entire speech as favorable, we may remember all of it. If we perceive that it is unfavorable, we may wipe it entirely from our mind. It happens like, for example, we can say that if you are listening to any particular lecture, you tend to remember those things that you are interested in. For example, if you are listening to a lecture that holds certain things, certain points that you are interested in, that you support, that supports your belief, definitely you are going to remember it and that will be retained in your mind. Then heading towards the cultivation theory, this theory was introduced by George Gerbener in 1967. It is based on the assumption that mass media has subtle effects on audience who unknowingly absorb the dominant symbols, images and messages of media. He called it cultivation of dominant image patterns. According to this theory, a long persistent exposure to television is capable of cultivating common beliefs about the world. As you can rightly see in the images itself, you can see a boy is looking at uh, you know, certain images. Uh, they consist of something uh, related to more of aggression, violence. So it happens like for 10 days if you are watching a particular program that is based on violence, that, are, that has more violence in it. So it's obvious that you will start cultivating that thing. Gerben and his colleagues are of the view that the messages of television do not portray reality in society. But repeated exposure to such distortions lead to development of particular beliefs about the world. Then what is the focus of cultivation theory otherwise? Let us talk about this now. This theory is based on the idea that the views and behaviors of those who spend more time with the media, particularly television, reflect what they have seen on television. Individuals who watch television simply to pass time or because it becomes a habit appear to be more affected than people whose viewing is planned and motivated. It is like if I am watching a particular program, I am just watching it to pass time. So my viewing is not planned. At that particular moment, my ideas are open, my mind is open and it will receive everything that is shot at it. So I am in a more of, you know, it is obvious that I will cultivate those particular things. Uses and gratification theory. This theory discusses the effect of the media on people. It explains how people use the media for their own needs and get satisfied. This theory has emerged out of the studied this theory has emerged out of the studies which shifted their interest and focus from what media do to the people to what people do with the media. It is like we always uh, question media. We put questions to media that what is media doing for us? Is media doing the duties well? Is the media performing right? Is the media performing the role right? But it shifts the focus. It shifts the focus to what a person is doing with media. What we as a person do with media. How do we make use of media? The term gratification refers to the rewards and satisfactions experienced by audience after the use of media. There are several researchers classified uh, like several researchers have classified the various uses and gratifications. First, let us, let us Several researchers have classified the various uses and gratification. Let us first talk about cognition. It means the act of coming to know something. When a person uses mass medium to obtain information about something, then he or she is using the medium in a cognitive way. Like just I am watching media to gain knowledge, to know about something new that is happening. Talking about diversion. Another basic need of human being is for diversion. Diversion can take many forms. Some of them are stimulation. 
stimulation or seeking relief from boredom or the routine activities of everyday life. Viewers watch programs when they are bored and have nothing else to do or simply to pass time. When you are feeling bored, you do not have anything to do. Uh, this is the best option to go and switch on the television and just see your favorite television soap or you like listening to music or anything that you like doing. That is stimulation. Then is relaxation. Relaxation or escape from the pressures and problems of day-to-day -day life. However, it is said that too much of stimulation is undesirable. Now we'll head towards the emotional release of pent-up emotions and energy. This is again a very interesting point to be discussed. The use of media for emotional release is obvious. Emotional release can take many forms. For example, it seems to be that many people in the audiences are comforted by seeing that other people have troubles greater than their own. See, everyone can relate to it, I must say. As what happens is, like, for example, if I'm struggling in my life, God forbids if someone is struggling in one's life. So what happens is, when you get to know a person who also is struggling in his life, so you feel kind of contented that I'm not the only one who is suffering. That is what happens when you watch a television. Like, for example, uh, the protagonist of a particular program is your favorite. You idolize that particular person a lot. And then you see that he is going through the same emotions. He's uh, you know, facing all those pressures, all those problems, he's facing similar things that you are doing. So you tend to feel relieved that, okay, I'm not the only one. Rather, there are many other people who are facing similar kinds of problems. And that gives you an instant energy altogether. So that is what the emotional release of pent-up emotions point talks about. Now is the re reality exploration or advice. Reality exploration or advice. The program is used to help solve problems in viewers' life. Some programs help the viewers to understand his or her own life as well as others. Because you get to know about the experiences, about the likes, dislikes and opinions of other people as well. Then talking about the social utility, it is when the program is used as a tool for social interaction with others and the people view the programs with their friends and enjoy talking about it. Going to movie with friends is another common factor among youngsters. Among youngsters. In fact, many times watching film is of secondary importance and social event of going out is of importance. Rightly said, if we talk about the social utility, see, this happens and it is evident that Sometimes what happens that you go to a particular movie, it is not that the movie is your priority. The priority is to sit with your friends, to talk with, uh, to talk with them, to share their experiences, right? So it is very important point though, that is of social utility. And we can make use of media for the social utility purposes as well. Then is withdrawal. People at times use the media to create a barrier between themselves and other people or other activities. Media help provide, avoid certain course that must be done. Perhaps many of us put off our work until we finish watching television program. Now let's talk about the two-step flow theory. The two-step flow theory of communication model says that most people form their opinion under the influence of opinion leaders who in turn are influenced by the mass media. Two-step flow theory suggests that opinion leaders pay close attention to the mass media and pass on their interpretation of the media messages to others. What actually happens is this particular theory that we are talking about, two-step flow theory, talks about the opinion leaders. What happens is that there are opinion leaders who communicate or disseminate the information from the media to the masses. Now, what happens is that sometimes you tend to be objective, not objective, but subjective in nature. Why? Because I am adding my point of view. I am adding my opinions, my likes and dislikes, which is actually not, you know, a good sign to do because when you are communicating a message, it has to be communicated the way it is. So, this is uh, what I was talking about, the limitation of two-step flow theory. And uh, basically, you will keep all the theories in mind because let me tell you one thing that these theories are really going to work for you in the near future. Have a very good day. Thank you.